Hello, my name is Vera Viana, and I'm a researcher in the Faculty of Architecture in the University of Porto in Portugal. As a geometer, I dedicate special attention to polyhedral theory and how inspirational it remains for those who design a materialized form and space. Tessellations of polyhedra have been recurrently explored in architecture and engineering. Without bringing stereotomy into discussion, notable examples in which other than cuboidal forms are explored are found in the works of Anne Ting, Bruce Gov, David Emerick, Jean-Francois Gabriel, Michael Burt, Peter John Pierce, or Zvi Ecker, to name a few. For this research, we depart from the idea of uniform solid tessellations as skeletal space frames and propose additional networks to support overall stress and compression loads. Now, we know that no spatial structure is more efficient than the tetraoctahedral system originally explored by Alexander Graham Bell, but the idea is to expand the repertoire of geometrical possibilities to unusual configurations. Polygons that fit together to fill the plane with no gaps or overlaps produce plane tessellations. This is an example of an irregular hexagon that produces a monohedral tessellation. Polyhedral outline a tessellation if each pair is joined face to face and space is filled with no gaps or overlaps. Here we see one of the few concave polyhedral space fillers. The possibilities to fill space with polyhedra are endless, even if cells are all equal. But if we restrict the vertices of the tessellation to be transitive and the cells to be uniform, only 28 possibilities exist. The following shows these 28 possibilities. Number two, as a skeletal structure, matches exactly the octet truth. The first 13 include cells that are either platonic or Archimedean polyhedra, except for numbers 10 and 13 that include octagonal prisms. 11 tessellations derive from the extrusion of uniform plane tessellations. The tessellation of cubes is included in these, of course. The remaining are elongated or gerated versions of other tessellations. In the space rooms we propose, the cells are not meant to be hollow. The geometric pattern for the supporting system takes the cells vertices, centroids, and edges midpoints as connecting nodes. The idea is to obtain a geometrically rigid solution with low structural density close to a modular solution. For the cubic tessellations, tessellation, I will just show. The body centered cubic lattice in which the vertices of the cells connect are connected to their respective centroid and the face centered cubic lattice in which the vertices and face centroids provide the structurally optimal solution of the tetraoctahedral tessellation. BCC and FCC will research later in other tessellations. Modularity is a fundamental, fundamental asset for the efficiency of any spatial structure. In this case, certain pairs of tetrahedra and truncated tetrahedra form a special rhombohedron. Here we see the four possible ways to consider a rhombohedron for each truncated cell. The first network takes the long diagonals of rhombohedra for additional struts. In the second alternative, the struts are the medians of the truncated cells. This is perhaps a more practical solution because the resulting vectors are mutually perpendicular. Truncated octahedra divide space equally with minimal surface area, but they cannot function alone as a space frame. For the additional network, the diagonals of the square faces are added as struts and the centroids of opposite squares are joined for a second set of struts. Connecti connecting each triad of closed face centroids, equilateral triangles arise that outline regular octahedra. The structure obtained is fully triangulated and octahedra fill space with triangular antiprisms. Here we see some more. Here we take advantage of the fact that each vertex of the cube octahedron is at the same distance from the centroid and the closest vertices. As such, the internal diagonals provide a structurally efficient solution to which the internal diagonals of octahedra are added. Here we connect the centers of octahedra to obtain the body-centered cubic lattice. The system is presumably stable enough, but not wholly efficient. Again, we will take advantage of cuboctahedra to obtain a stabilized system. 
In the truncated octahedral cells, the struts connecting the midpoints of opposite edges have the same direction as the diagonals of cuboctahedra. In the truncated tetrahedra, the additional struts are the long diagonals of the hexagonal faces. Again, we have three types of cells. For Romy cuboctahedra, certain medians are added as additional struts. To cuboctahedral cells, the medians are also added due to the collinearity with the struts that are added to the cubic cells. From the vector systems we have seen, the most efficient derives from the internal diagonals of cuboctahedra. Although these cells are not found here, we connect the centroids of certain squared faces of Romy cuboctahedral cells, since we know they have the same direction as the diagonals of similarly oriented cuboctahedra. The face diagonals of all squared faces are then included, as well as the cube's medians. To conclude, we have proposed a few uniform solid tessellations, a skeletal space frames, and a supporting network to ensure structural rigidity. Without surprise, we concluded that the networks that seem more efficient are based on the self-sufficient tetra-octahedral tetra system. In tessellations with three or four types of cells, the networks are too complex to be viable. Physical and parametric modeling, as well as addictive manufacturing, are necessary to achieve sturdier results. Even if our idea has not yet been fully developed, we hope to have inspired others to investigate tessellations involving Archimedean polyhedra. Thank you for your attention.